Well, let's uh, break it all down. So what we're going to talk about wholesaling real estate. So guys, we're going to say this a million times today. So just understand on the bottom right here is freewholesaling.com. That is our free wholesaling course. And before you're like, oh, I know what these guys are doing. This is a $3,000 course he's trying to sell me. Oh, I got him, right? Here's the truth. In wholesaling real estate, yes, you do need knowledge. You do need a mentor. You do need the information to know what to do. That's basically with anything though. You know, how do you get good at fishing, basketball, uh, being good at cooking? I said, you know, like you need a general recipe. You need general knowledge, right? Like a lot of it's with experience, but if you have zero experience, you're, you're going you're gonna to need someone to teach you about a little bit, right? Every great boxer had a mentor, you know, uh, but that only goes so far. I, I truly believe you need information to be successful, but you also don't need to pay for it. I, I think that's the biggest thing. So on the bottom right here, we have freewholesaling.com. That is our free real estate wholesaling course. Uh, so that's where we teach real estate wholesaling absolutely for free. So we're going to break down today how to start wholesaling real estate. We're going to basically break down the process, how to get your first deal, marketing, everything you need to know. Uh, we're all going to break that down absolutely for free today. Uh, so let's kind of go over the wholesaling real estate process. I have it nice, beautifully uh, color coordinated. That is absolutely spectacular. Uh, it is, it is, it is beautiful. beautiful color coordination here, but uh, this is honestly the real estate wholesaling process, right? So let's kind of break it all down. So if we go from a wholesaling deal from A to Z, right? From the beginning to the end, right? We got marketing. We have locking up the deal, find the buyer. So this is basically the real estate wholesaling process. So let's go from the front. This might sound confusing starting out. I get it. I'm sorry if this is confusing, but th this is basically it, you know, uh, marketing, right? In marketing, the point of it is to find distressed properties and that's what we're doing. So in real estate wholesaling, basically how the process works is we are doing a finder's fee. So how it works is I go find somebody who wants to get rid of their house. I agree to buy their house. So let's use you as the seller. Okay. Ooh. Oh yeah. So let's say you have tall grass. You have this just second house sitting there. It's just vacant abandoned, right? I like my house. It's all natural. Yeah. So I'm driving around town. I see this ugly house, just this disgusting house, right? Guess what we're going to do? I'm going to go call you. I'll go find your phone number at truepeoplesearch.com and call you. Say, hey, are, are you the owner of this house? And are you interested? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually interested. I have a quick conversation with you. I'm going to go download a free contract at freewholesaling.com. I'm going to meet you at the house. And I'm going to agree to buy your house for like $80,000. Okay. I'm going to write. Zach Ginn agrees to buy 123 Main Street from Rick. Rick, well, Rick. we'll have to talk about that number. R R for for $80,000. Then you sign it, right? Mm -hmm. And then basically what I do from there is I bring it to a title company. And they basically will do the title for it. And what I'm going to do is go find a rich landlord or like a house flipper, basically, aka a cash buyer, someone who's actually going to buy that piece of paper. So I just wrote a piece of paper for you to buy the house for $80,000. i am not selling the house. I'm selling the piece of paper on that, right? So what I'm going to do is sell that piece of paper to a cash buyer. And what I'm going to do is sell it to them for uh, about $20,000 above the 80. So I'm going to sell it to them for $100,000. Okay. At closing. He is going to he is going to give to the title company a hundred thousand dollars, eighty thousand. That's going to go to the seller, which we agreed to give you eighty grand. At the end of the day, you're happy, right? You got your eighty I'm very grand. Happy. I get a nice check for twenty thousand dollars for finding the deal. That is what we mean by a finder's fee. You get paid. You get paid to find ugly houses. It's absolutely amazing. It's um, find me a way you get. 20k in a month that easy legally uh, legally without that much work <laughs> so that is the process so if you really look at it from here we got the marketing so marketing that is the way that that's how that's actually how we find distressed properties uh we're going to lock up the deal basically we're going to call with the seller and sign and basically agree to buy the house we're going to go find a buyer we're going to find an end buyer the rich landlord house slipper to buy the agreement for a profit we're going to walk through the property right we're going to walk the buyer through uh, basically see and get the assignment signed, uh, we're selling the paper on it and then closing. They would go to the title company and get our check. That's how you do it. I have found in wholesaling real estate, there's pretty much three phases to it. Uh, if you really want to chop it up really easy, uh, this is pretty much it. Uh, it is marketing mm -hmm. acquisitions and dispositions. Those are the three phases of wholesaling. And really people really complicate wholesaling real estate. But it all comes down to those three things, marketing, acquisitions, and dispositions, right? Like we got to go find the deal. We got to go lock up the deal. And then we got to sell the deal. That is wholesaling real estate. If you really want to break it down into like three things, that is it, right? Yeah. And anyone who systematizes this business 
you have to break down these basically three departments and that's what they all they talk about on scaling when they do it. But like, you, you've got to understand it because most people, they, they just want to try to do everything. So like part of it, like our free whole thing.com was we teach you how to do marketing because it takes time to you. You're going from zero to hundred miles an hour. You got to go out and find people and it takes time. So if you wait to try to study all the material and say it takes you six months, I don't know if you got a job or what's going on. You, you kind of miss the boat. We learn much better while we do something as opposed to learning in theory. So if you take the action, the course, start with the marketing part and then you go like this, well, I found someone, what do I do now? Well, great. Now you go on the acquisition. So the whole course is built in sequential models and you don't have to wait to study the whole thing. Like we did in school. No, it, that's the thing. So I go to the course freehosting.com. It is all there. It, it, it makes it all pretty simple. Now there's three phases of wholesaling, but when I've looked at marketing too, if you really want to get the nitty gritty of it, like there is three, there's only three ways to do marketing. There's only three, there's three, there's outbound marketing, mm -hmm. right? So what is outbound marketing? Outbound marketing is basically us going after, uh, I, I don't know if this is the right term, but it's quote unquote hunting, right? It's like our hunting list. We're fishing, right? Like, you know, there's trolling for fishing, right? Like where you got the, uh, you got the lure and you just got the bobber and then you're just waiting for it. And then there's like actively going out there and fishing or doing a deep drop, deep dot, deep drop or something like that. But the, the thing about outbound marketing is we're like hunting for the leads, right? Like we're going out there, we're finding it, right? Uh, that, that is one thing of marketing. Now that is the best analogy. That is our co calling or SMS text blasting. We're going out there and we're finding deals, right? The, the keyword is out. It's going out yeah. from you to the customer. So you, you've got to go, I don't care if it's from your computer, your phone, if you're walking doors, the doors, you're going out and finding deals. That's all that means. I don't want to complicate it. No. And then there is inbound marketing. So kind of like the name is the leads are coming to you. Correct. They're coming in like an inbox. So it's like a solicitation. So it, it's like me putting <laughs> bait on the hook and waiting for a fish to come to me. Once I get that wiggle on the rod, then it's up to me to execute and build rapport with them and close the deal. The outbound is I'm basically going out looking for fish. And when I find one, I'm going to chuck the lure at them hard as I can. And either they buy it or they don't. So everybody's got like a different opinion of what they like and stuff. I will tell you in the long run, you will wind up doing a combo of both of these for the most part. I don't know if I'm overstepping my boundaries here is in the beginning, you're going to focus more on the outbound than you do on the inbound because number one, you, you you're brand new and you don't know what you're doing. So you want to learn with outbound marketing. Well, the reason is outbound marketing is cheap. Like it's basically yeah, free it's, inbound marketing. You're on a fixed budget guys. So the yeah. inbound is going to cost you money. And honestly, even if you have the money, you don't know what to do with the leads anyways. And you're going to overspend and you're going to smoke through that money. No matter how much money you have in wholesaling, you have to learn the business. You have to endure the journey. You can pay somebody a hundred grand to handhold you. God, please don't do that. You still have to go out and do the yeah. work regardless. And there's no shortcut. The only shortcut is if you bought in a fully functional business and that would cost you millions. And honestly, that doesn't even work in wholesaling. Yeah. So it just, so inbound marketing, what are the strategies for inbound marketing? This can either be direct mail, right? They're coming to you. Uh, basically another good, I've seen Facebook ads. I don't, I'm not a big fan of Facebook ads. I have never found Facebook ads to work really well, but the, you know why they don't work? Because the algorithm, actually, I'll say we've done Facebook ads. It was back in the olden days, you know, 2017, 2018. You get away with a lot more you know, then too. But on when we used to do Facebook ads, I used to go after a zip code and I only went after the hot zips. And yeah. it, it was decent. It wasn't good, but it was decent. Basically, you're not allowed to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, they made it really hard. You can't really go after iPhones, Apple. Now, this is a whole privacy thing. I don't think it's too bad, you know, but like, the problem is Facebook ads have just been terrible. You know, uh, SEO, SEO is okay. I, I think SEO is probably out of the internet fad marketing. I think that's actually the best one. I know people do SEO that do really well. Uh, pay per clicks. I'm not a big fan of. I think SEO is actually the best one. But it works. But that it's, is a game. It's, it's a it's, it's a game. It's very expensive, and it is a ginormous learning curve. And I find more consultants when it comes to SEO and PPC. 
and they all have the same program. Give me six months. Well, they got a, a pretty monstrous fee in that plus the advertising. The reason I don't like Facebook is because all, all I hear people bragging, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm getting leads for 10 or $12. Who cares? Nobody goes on Facebook going, okay, I'm going to sell a distressed property today. No, but what I've seen is, honestly, I think SEO is probably the best one. Mm -hmm. Still not, the problem with SEO is the algorithm changes every single, almost and, weekly, and, but and monthly. Facebook is probably the worst. Facebook's the worst. Um, so They're extreme. Unless you know what you're doing. I know some people, they live, breathe, eat it, Yeah. and they do well, but, they, but they're on top of it every single day. I can't do that. There's a long nurturing a mess, phase yeah. because even I, I deal with real estate agents all the time. A real estate agent is 12 to 18 months lead nurture time. That's for a freaking listing. Yeah. Can you imagine a property you got to sell? And the other thing with Facebook, I'm just going to, this is the honest truth and no guru is ever going to tell you this. They don't like wholesalers. They, like any type of complaint, anything you get. So they have to prove the graphic. So wholesalers got cute and tried to put like their bandit signs in the picture. I, I and now that. Facebook has shut that Facebook down. Facebook shuts down text. It, they're smart. So the minute you think you have an edge in Facebook, you're going to get uh, sent to the curb. Yeah. So that's inbound market. The best inbound marketing I've seen for your, like your time and your money, hands down, is reverse trying for dollars. Because it's basically direct mail, but yeah. it's cheap. You're just throwing a sticky note on a house. So what is reverse drawing for dollars? It's basically when you stick a sticky note on an ugly house, I might drive by, see your ugly house. I'm going to put a sticky note right. Hey, this is Zach. I had a quick question about your property. Mm -hmm. Please give me a call back. I'm going to get a 40 to 50% response rate with that, which is 40 times better than the average direct mail. And huh. I'm going to be talking to so many more leads than the average drawing for dollars person. And it works. So if you're a beginner and you want to get into inbound marketing, that's probably going to be your best bet. So if you want leads to come to you, that's going to be your best and cheapest option. The problem is that does cost money. It's gas money, right? Uh, you got to pull a code violation, and maybe go after those type of properties. Uh, so I think a mix of the two, I would say if you're starting out, I think cold calling is really good. Uh, some government lists, cold calling that, skip tracing on truepeoplesearch.com, do some reverse drawing for dollars, but uh, you just got to test these out. Now, the last one here is everyone thinks it's only outbound inbound. There's actually another one, you know, uh, this is co-wholesaling networking, um, more or less. And this is just knowing people to a point. Like we do a lot of JV deals. It is a part of it. Like it is a way of marketing, uh, networking us doing videos like this. This is marketing to a point. Yeah. Uh, but like you're not going after leads. They're not coming to you. People are locking up leads and then coming to you after. That's great. Uh, but I think as a beginner, it, this is something like you got an extensive cash buyer system. Uh, but that is, I have to truthfully tell you, what are the three ways of marketing? Those are basically the three ways. I, there's no if ands around if ands or buts around it. Yeah, that's and, it. And honestly, your personal situation will dictate which way you do it. Yeah. Most of you should be targeting number one because it's more cost effective. You'll actually learn more and you get to learn the ropes of dealing with yeah. sellers and everything. And then once you get a proficient, you can start adding some of the other stuff. So like another example, inbound would be direct mail, but I don't want you starting out with direct mail because you're probably going to outspend what you're able to do. Oh, it's like giving, and we're doing a lot of fishing meat uh, analogies today, but like fishing. if I gave you like a crazy fish, like let's say it's I gave, like going in a UFC match and you just came out of like high school wrestling, you're going to get, well, no, it's like this. If, <laughs> you're gonna get killed. If I, if you gave me a kite rod, like five years ago, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Right. If you gave me a, uh, you don't still know. don't know what to do with it. I still don't know what to do with it. Like if you gave me, <laughs> I don't know, like you gave me a bike when I was five, like I have a bike. This is great. I don't know how to ride this thing, yeah. but it's really fun and sexy. That's the thing. A postcard, like a lot, a lot of people who are beginners and holes, they'll do a postcard. They'll get a hot lead. Mm -hmm. They'll just, they'll fumble it. Right. Like yeah. they, they won't know what to do with it. The problem is when you have that powerful of a weapon, which is your postcards, your direct mail, yeah. if you don't know how to do it, you're going to fail. That's why you got to go to freeholsing.com. Learn our scripts, learn exactly how to do it. But I'm just saying, like, we'll start them out with a slingshot and work our uh, way up. Huh? Yeah, but that, that that's <laughs> the truth here, guys. So, uh, really, when it comes to marketing again, guys, it comes down to two things uh, for those two ones inbound, outbound marketing. It comes to lists and your marketing channel. Lists come down to two things also there's free lists and paid lists. I really try to dumb down and simplify this for everybody uh, because. I think in a dumbed down way. I like to dumb down everything and really think of it from a simple way. Maybe that's how my brain works. I don't know why, but
But once I simplify things, it makes it a lot easier for me to understand it. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I'm conveying this information to you. So lists, first things lists, there's free lists and paid lists. What's a free list, uh, which we'll break that down on the next slide. Uh, but paid lists are lists you got to pay for. There's free marketing. Uh, but really if you want to wholesale and you don't have any money and you want to start marketing, getting lists and marketing channels, it all comes down to two simple things. That's basically it. There's only I'm saying this, there's only two lists that cost $0 in wholesaling real estate. There's only two. And it sounds like a crazy statement, but it's true. There are government lists, right? And there are hunting lists. That's it, right? There are hunting lists or government lists. And I've said this like a month ago before, and I kind of want to say it one more time, but like there's government lists. These are lists that you get from the government that cost $0. Mm -hmm. Literally, you just go up to your county government. You know, you go to the clerk of the court. You go to the code enforcement department. You go to the fire department. You go to the utility. Like think of your government and then go to the website and see all the little departments. This is kind of weird, but like every single one of those little departments have leads. So I go to court enforcement. They have the code violation list. I go to fire damage properties. The fire, I, sorry, I go to the fire department, fire damage properties. Yeah. I go to the utility department. Guess what happens when people don't pay their public utilities? They get the list. I'm a tax paying citizen. I can get this information. Guess what? Happens? I go to the stinking sheriff's office. Yeah. I'll get the arrest record list. Clerk of the court. I get the probate list. Guys, your government is, is sitting there just pulling amazing leads for you. And you have to be going after it. It, it. It's amazing that nobody ever talks about these lists besides us. And a lot of people getting their first, second, third, fourth deal are all getting it from government lists. Absolutely amazing. No guru talks about it. Yeah, it's so the reason most coaches and gurus don't talk about it because it takes away the secret. Like the secret is all good deals come from some sort of distress. So if they're going to derive at the government level, meaning they went up on a county or city list, why don't you just go directly to the source? But we've all gotten a little bit spoiled with the technology, like me included to a point. And I'm just telling you there, if the, the pill sounds too magical, it most likely is. Yeah. All these softwares you guys are seeing, at, I'm telling you, other than the basic ones we recommend, like you don't need them. Like they're honestly, they're such fluff. It's a waste of time. You can manipulate data however you want. I will tell you this. The one thing in wholesaling you can't spend too much time on, you can disagree with me or not, is building your list. I don't care if you go on the listrei.com, you get government lists. You should spend a lot of your time studying lists. That's how I became so good at marketing. Because once you send out, once you pick your list, and then you go out and pick your media to market it, you're going to get feedback and some's going to be good and some's going to be bad. And then you're going to have to make adjustments and you're going to say, Hey, well that worked or that was terrible because what happens in my market's not going to necessarily going to work in your market. There's no one coach or guru that can tell you this is how it works across the country. All real estate is localized. Okay. And that's the one thing you guys have to, you have to take ownership of that. But these lists, there's like, everyone acts like it's a big secret. It's no big secret. Get your list figured out, look at the data and adjust and spend a lot of time studying lists. You cannot, in my opinion, you cannot overdo list because list is where all your prospects derive from. And if that's not right, you will never yeah. find a motivated seller. So it doesn't, that and honestly, just practicing on talking with sellers, those two things, you cannot spend enough time, especially in your first 90 days. I agree. I just... You have to spend the time to get better at this. Yeah. And how do you get better at pulling lists? By pulling lists. Pulling right? lists. And just understanding them. Uh, experience is one of the best teachers. I, guys, you can go watch every video I've ever had in the history. That'd be a lot. Uh, but like, it still won't make you an expert. You have to actually take in the action. Yeah. You can watch all the videos you want. You've got to actually put in the work and take in the action. I used to, you know, in the beginning, I used to spend, I'm not even kidding you, three, four hours working on a list. I oh would like, gosh. so I had to make every dollar count, like a lot of you on this live. And it's like, I, I didn't have room to make a mistake. I only had a couple hundred bucks. So I'm like, okay, I got to do this. And then I would adjust it and just adjust 20, 30 people to maximize like my target market. And that's, you can't yeah. spend too much time doing it. I'm here to tell you. On the other hand, if you spend three or four hours comping, it will kill you. It will paralyze you and you will never do a deal. I agree. So take that extra time you're doing comping. It shouldn't take you more than 10, 15 minutes and spend it on list building, 
and the practice, the ability to talk with sellers so you can role play. So when it comes for the real time, you can do it. I, mean, I put Jay on the shot clock yesterday, right? Like um, sometimes you got to just quit the amount of time you're, you're spending on the comping and just go, you know, we're doing college yeah. shot clock or pro a pro. I'm not doing the 30 second one. I'm it's like forever. Isn't it? All right. So hunting lists, let's talk about the hunting list. So that's the temper. So kind of, like I said before, these are lists we have to go outside in the wild and find. So these are drying for dollars, mm -hmm. right? Technically free. You can walk for dollars. Technically you can run for uh, dollars. You can go out there. You can do Zillow for sale by owners. You want to run for dollars today though. Uh, you can go Zillow for sale by owner. You're actually going here and calling these. You guys see me every Tuesday doing it. Every group is scared to do it. They're, they're scared. These gurus are scared of us. Uh, they're, they're, what are they all recorded? Or they're just uh, calling, calling a real estate agent? Yeah. They're calling the, gra the grandma. On, it's dude. the grandma on the other line. Calling a real estate agent? Crazy. You guys should pick random people for them to call and make sure it's live. That way, you know, it's authentic. There's a spinner wheel. I, they won't do it. So these are government lists. What are government lists? Again, this is the full breakdown. These are code violations, probates, water shutoffs, liens, fire damage properties, arrest records, pre foreclosures. I can go on forever. Evictions. Evictions. Divorces. Eviction. That's where the et cetera comes from. Uh, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it, it goes on forever. So if you want to get the full breakdown of it, just go to freeholstling.com. Is that like a Latin word, et cetera? I think so. Probably for overall. That. It's Latin. Whatever. So I think everybody abbreviates it because you can't spell it. I, I think it's E-T something. But I'd like so, to put you in a spelling challenge right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so government lists you get from freeholstling.com. I can go forever on it. If you want to see me actually pulling, it's all there at freeholstling.com. But amazing lists. All the code enforcement Basically, you get these all from the code enforcement, clerk of the court, public records online or in person, even go to the court dockets, the fire department, sheriff's department, utility department. Guys, just go to freehostling.com. It'll make your life a lot easier. I promise you. Now, where the hunting list, where the hunting list come from? Trying for dollars, reverse trying for dollars, door knocking. I'm not a big fan of door knocking, but technically you can if you're going hunting for these lists. You can hold Facebook message people. Ooh, uh, you can JV uh, people. Uh, there's a lot of ways to go out here and hunt for deals, right? I think a healthy mix is both of them, right? And just seeing which one you really like. Uh, I think uh, honestly, really for free, that's it. You know, I just, I would like to add in bandit signs, but they do cost money. So I'm not going to put it in there. Uh, I like bandit signs, but it's, you can do it on a budget. Just write them yourself. Don't get them printed and don't buy them from these companies. They're going to kill you in shipping charges and they're going to want you to buy 500 signs. I agree. It's crazy. So let's talk about the free marketing channels. So what are the free marketing channels? So marketing channels are a way for us to actually go out here and target people. Uh, this is basically, it's kind of the, uh, if you really think about it, it is the bow and then the arrow is the list. Uh, if you really want to get into an analogies, right? Uh, you're going, the list is what it's going to help us with it. It's basically, it's two things really like, if the list is good and the channel's bad, you're going to fail. So like cold calling is the most common one, right? So for example, I could have the hottest list ever for cold calling, right? Mm -hmm. And I go tell you and I'm just like really tired and I don't talk well. And like, I, hi, what, what do you want? Hi, you sell your house. Like, do you want to sell that? Yeah. If I, it's good. It could be the best list in the world. I'm going to be terrible, right? Vice versa. If I am the greatest cold call in the world, and give you if you give me a list of multi-millionaires and I'm trying to buy their fourth beachfront house, uh, you know, in the Hamptons, I'm there's no I don't care. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be terrible, right? Yeah. You need both of them. It, not one's not gonna work without the other. I agree. And it, that's what you need uh for success here. So it's gonna help you so much, guys. So uh cold calling is number one, text blasting and DMing people. Uh that's another free one. You can text blast for free, Google Voice, Facebook, you can slide in the dms uh, as the kids say uh, that's a really good way to actually get it for free you don't really need any money uh, you can drop voicemails in uh, you can just call someone and voicemail them there uh, for a list you have networking is a free one the co-wholesaling reverse drive for dollars if you can walk or run technically we'll uh, we'll put that in there too uh, but the next part is like how do you talk to sellers i always say so we have the marketing channel right here you know right we actually know how to go out here and actually talk to sellers. The next part here is talking to a seller, right? So I'm cold calling, get a good lead. How do I have a conversation with the seller? How do I act like you know, a sort of a 
expert more or less, or like someone that I kind of know what I'm talking about. How do I become good enough where I know I can close that deal? Right. And you don't need experience. Yeah. I mean, so many people think you've got to be the, like the super slick, like Grant Cardone salesman at like no diss to Grant Cardone. I, I enjoy his marketing, but the reality is we're in an era where people, they thrive on truth and authenticity. What you basically have to learn in wholesaling is just in the beginning, you just got to learn how to qualify people. Yeah. It's your qualifying will walk you through someone through your pitch and your funnel. And honestly, you got to seek the motivation out well, first. Let me interrupt you here. Yeah. What is qualifying? Is asking questions. That's is, it. Qualifying is the art of asking questions. People think I, you have to be an act, like qualifying is asking you interviewing. Well, it's like knowing how to interview someone. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's just teaching you how to have a conversation. Yeah. Like, do you guys hate when a salesperson calls you and you can tell they're going through a script? Oh my gosh. And the minute you interrupt them, they're like, hold on, wait a minute, let me get through my script. I'm done. So like, we're big, we're big, big fans of learning how to have conversations with people. And a conversation simply is taking your four qualifying points and doing it in a systematic way just to ask questions. So you can get to the truth. Number one, see if you can help the seller out and see if they're going to be a good fit for your program. That's all you do. You are not, let me repeat, you are not selling and wholesaling. You are strictly qualifying. Yeah. Everyone thinks you got to sell. No. Well, what about cash buyers? Oh no, you're pretty much an order taker at that point. A cash you want buyer. this deal? You want that price? Show me your proof of funds. That's it. End of story. It's just a business transaction. Like, yeah, have you ever gone to Walmart or like, uh, Sam's Club or like any grocery store, yeah. Trader Joe's. Do you think they're going out here and telling you, you need to buy this tomato? No, no. it's there. You're hungry. Yeah. Take it. Cash buyers are hungry for deals. They're I, constantly yeah. making rental income. You don't see the person at the grocery store acting like a car salesman and they sell a lot. Yeah. Try, try negotiating at like Home Depot on that scanner machine oh, and go, I don't gosh. like that price. Too it's just 23 94. I'll give you $10. And like, you just like wasting it. That's how I treat cash buyers. I'm just like, here's yeah. the price. Take it or leave. If not, I got somebody else to take it for it. That's, That's it. it. On the other side, all you are is qualifying and have a conversation. So if you're like, I'm not sure if wholesaling is for me because I'm not this great slick salesman. Perfect. You're perfect for wholesaling. People want to know that you're paying attention, you're authentic, and you're telling them the truth, which is what we do. But they're like, Zach, you're lying. You, you have to be this great salesperson. You don't. You can't. I go live every Tuesday and I do cold calling, right? right? And I've, I did two really good price commitments Tuesday, right? And I, I got all these closings. I was able to close sellers. Not once I acted like a salesperson. I did actually a couple of good sales moves, but that's just because it's a little more advanced. But I always talk from the same perspective. Hey, I'm looking to buy your house. Yeah. Me and my partner. And that's here's, it. here's a little secret. I've had people work for me and people I've known in this business. If they're truly slick, like used car salesmen, like they use those slimy, like rough lines. They never last in this business because you wind up pissing off so many people and like, you're just not authentic. And it's, they actually wind up working so much harder. They go into another business. So I'm here just being yourself is what we need in wholesaling. You can't be the next Zach, you brick, the grant card. It doesn't work. God made only one of you and you've got to accentuate it and do what you have. Trying to change who you are as a person, unless you need to. It doesn't work in wholesaling. People, I, they, I mean, I always tell you, like, you look at this Grant Cardone videos, he's selling information. So those are hard sales. Yeah. You know, when you're doing real estate, it's completely, like, you look at the best realtors, like, let's use Ryan Serhant, right? Yeah. Have you, like, you've seen him on his listing appointments, like, they're televised. Uh, he's not like, do it now. Like, he just, he's to the point, he's personable. But guess how he sells? His reputation pretty much, uh, precedes him. Right. Yeah. And that's really like, he, he's not a slick sales, but like, he's just very good at selling it, but like, you don't have to be this expert at it. You just have to have conversations and care. So we break it down here. How do you become good? Act like you're buying a car. And why do I always say act like you're buying a car? Because so many people, they freeze up when it comes to talking to a seller or cold calling. And then I ask them like, Hey, have you ever bought in a car? Oh yeah, from just a person off a of Craigslist. Yes, all the time. Well, were you nervous to go talk? No, I wasn't nervous. I'm just buying a car, yeah. right? Yeah. If if I go there and I don't like the car, or they don't like the price. I'm just not going to buy the car. They have no, they have no hesitation. They're no, there's no stress. They don't care. 
because they know if it doesn't work, they can just walk away, right? They, they're not, they don't have to. Oh, when it comes to real estate, oh my gosh. Oh, dude, they're stressed. They're sweating. They're like, what do I do? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Same exact thing. When you buy a car, you don't act like you're an expert buying the car. Mm -hmm. You don't. Hey, I was looking to buy a car. I drive a car. Hey, I live in a house. I'm looking to buy a house, right? Yeah. It's just, it's very basic. Like you don't act like you're a master mechanic when you're buying the car. You don't act like, oh, look at the, the fourth. Ed. How, how is this twin turbo? Is it? No. I'm looking to buy the car, right? Yeah. And it, it's pretty simple. How do you know the price of the car? What are other similar cars selling for? Oh, okay. Like I know it's a good deal. I'm not really simple. So when I go and actually go to the house, I'm looking to buy your house. You're looking to sell it. That's yeah. it. So, so many people who start out in wholesaling, they try to compare it to traditional real estate. You know, one with, with a lawyer and a real estate agent. And that's not what we do. Those people have to be super slick, like salespeople, because you got to talk to somebody into paying something retail for something they don't even really need and pay a premium because they're, they're, they're using so many professionals and everything's got to be polished and clean. When it comes to wholesaling, you're just looking for like 5% of those transactions out there of distressed property. And those people, honestly, they don't want an expert on real estate. Can you solve my problem? Yes or no. And honestly, you don't even have to know everything. I tell you, my first three deals, I thought, I literally thought I was going to die of like a nervous breakdown. I had no idea what I was doing. All I did though, what I did well is I focused on the person and I told them, listen, either I'm going to buy your house or I'm going to help you get this problem solved. And then I just asked the questions. I went through, um, got all their information. And then I turned around and I would put an offer together. Sometimes I would come back because I didn't know. And if I didn't have an answer, I'd go get someone to help me out. And honestly, telling the truth is so much easier in wholesaling. The more fake you are, just the shorter your career span is going to be. So start out on the right foot. Honestly. Everybody thinks it's about the real estate. The reality is wholesaling is about the individual and the person. The real estate is just a byproduct. It's a math problem. So if you can solve, when people make a decision to sell a property for wholesaling, it's an emotional decision. So we focus on emotion. When people try to buy a piece of property with real estate agents and lawyers, it's all, they try to make it logical. And then they got a nice, pretty realtor to put them over the top. Like your wife deserves this. Your kids deserve this. Wholesaling completely different. It, it, it's amazing. You know, uh, I've always found there is some, like if you do implement some of the technically car salesman type tactics, if you implement like 5% in there, you're going to be good. Like you have to control the conversation. That's technically a sales tactic type conversation thing. and direction right. is, it is that's what you control. Cause that if you don't, you're nothing more than an order taker. It's very but indirect. The days where you can corner somebody in no. the corner of a room and go, listen, you're going to take this price or else it doesn't work. No. You're just going to freak them out. I just, it's not the right way to do business. So and like an example right now, we teach a lot of people go, oh my God, they want to bring in an attorney. And I'm like, who cares? Like, I don't want the attorney, but honestly, if you fight the attorney, you look like the person trying to hide something. So I, we just teach you tactfully on how to navigate through yeah. the attorney. And one thing I, always, I, one thing I always tell people is if like, if you're upfront and honest with somebody, you're actually gonna, like when I lowball people, you see my live cold calls. When if I go and lowball somebody, I'm straight up and honest with them. Hey, I can buy it this, yeah. or me and my partner can buy it this. There's no lying. There's no like trying to convince you. This is what I can do. I'm not lying. I'm not trying to convince you to take it, but that's what I can do, right? And yet, there is some tactics to it, right? Like we do teach at freeholding.com. Like condition the seller will be better, right? There are tactics that help increase it but it's not essential. The one thing that is essential for your success in sales and wholesaling real estate is confidence. Yeah. If you do not have the confidence, which confidence is technically just a belief in yourself and of what you're saying, a conviction in your soul and your heart of what you're doing and a belief in your brain. That's all confidence is. Confidence doesn't mean you're right. That is one thing you, you can tell pretty quick. Confidence doesn't mean you're right, but confidence is a belief in yourself more or less. And what do you have to have confidence in wholesaling or talking to a seller? It's that belief in yourself that you can buy their house cash with you and your cash buyer and your partner technically, right? Yeah. If you don't believe that you and your cash buyer can buy the house, you're not going to have that confidence. And if you have a legit cash buyer and they have a proof of funds, 
You should have all the confidence in the world to go and talk to a seller. Hey, I'm looking to buy a house, me and my partner. Yeah. Boom, right? So here's how it works, guys. You have a belief. If you believe in wholesaling, go listen, this resonates it's exactly what I want to do. I want to be financially free and get control of my life. That's your belief. Your conviction is basically your discipline and your rules. Like no matter what, this is what I'm going to do to get my first deal. And uh, I'm going to stick true no matter what happens. And then from all that, that culminates to your confidence. And you have to kind of stack them that way. Because if you don't even have a strong belief, if you doubt wholesaling, you don't think it's going to work, don't do it. It won't work. If you strongly believe, go, hey, dude, Rick's been doing it 20 years. Zach's been doing it almost five years plus now. Why can't I do it? You are absolutely yeah. right. But the thing is, the biggest enemy you're going to fight in wholesaling is going to be these little, that little talk you have between yeah. your ears. We've all had it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And you have to, you have to fight it. So one like little secret I do with people, you can put your belief, your conviction, whatever you want, your confidence, and put it on your bathroom mirror and just write it on. I apologize now for significant others, but use an erasable marker, not a, a permanent Sharpie and just write it out. And here's the thing is, every one of you look in the bathroom mirror every morning. You can't avoid I'll it. I'll tell you this right now. I'll say it. When I was five or six, it was on there, right? Like it's, it's annoying. weird. Well, that, it's weird. The, the problem is when your daughter gets a hold of the marker, it's like. Yeah, but like he's saying this right now. I can tell you. When I was five or six, he had it on this thing. Like it, it was there. But I, I did it. I it did was on it his with, bathroom. With it was fitness weird. goals. I did it with weight, and I did it with my business because, man, I gotta tell you, you got there's, there's some rough days. Like it doesn't like life happens, and I yeah. know that. So the idea is when you get up in the morning, you have to go. Okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm 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 gonna contact 25 sellers today, no matter what happens by noon, and then I just why back it up. I probably make all my notes on my computer, and you always write it down. Right. I, I'm so I'm an right? old school. That's probably I, why. Have to, I have to write stuff because it, there's some sort of connection to like my nervous system. So even when I go to like any type of learning seminar, I don't do masterminds because I don't find a lot of them beneficial because most of them won't tell the truth is I write it and then I'll transcribe it and put it in a computer. That's just how I learn it. This guy, I don't know how I that brain memorize, works. I memorize it. I'm just slow, but that's like when you ride it, a lot of times it burns in your brain. If it works that way and it helps you out, do it. Whatever like makes your boat float, but like you got to have like some clear cut stuff. Doesn't cost any money to ride it on the bathroom mirror. Just don't use a Sharpie. Um, my daughter got a hold of Sharpie on it once and I don't want to tell you what you got to do to remove it. But one thing I could tell you about starting out in wholesaling, because I remember dealing with you when I was starting a wholesaling, right? It seemed like when I talked to you as a beginner, you knew everything. Like you were the expert of everything. Like you, you knew everything, right? And I think a lot of kids think about their their father or their mother or their parent. Like they know everything. Mm -hmm. Now me doing thousands of real estate wholesaling deals, coming and looking at you now, the more deals I do, I realize that I don't know anything. You don't know anything. We don't know anything like special about wholesaling. Yeah. But the one thing I have, have figured out is you just, you've done it a lot. And yeah. You know what most likely is going to happen, but you don't know everything. We don't know next year what marketing list is going to work or not, but we're going to test them all out and see, yeah. right? Like that's the one thing I've noticed. It's like, you know, when we've been through a couple weird real estate cycles, my past five years together with you and me, mm -hmm. you didn't know it was going to happen. No, I'm but, clueless. No, obviously <laughs> we don't know though, but we kept testing things out and we figured out what worked. Um, I think that's one thing you got to understand. Like we, you can listen to us all day. Like, Technically experts on wholesaling, it feels weird to say that, but like, we're not going to know what exactly is going to work in your market. You have to test it out and see it. Yeah. I know people that try band signs, terrible. And I know people that try band signs in their market, like Memphis, and it works well. It's all dependent on you. We can give you our best advice for it, but really you got to take the action. And it's very, very localized. So yeah. like one of the great tools you can use is at uh, Wholesaling Houses for Real, our Facebook group. Uh probably the most interactive group in wholesaling. And because we monitor, we, we keep all the junk out of there so you can actually have useful conversations. But keep in mind, it's a great opinion because it's yeah. so it's, it's filtered of all the spam and the trash. But just because somebody types it on the internet doesn't make it solely true. And you can't make a decision based on people's opinion. I don't remove a comment on last the internet. week. Yeah. Real estate in Florida, is, uh, wholesaling in Florida is illegal. I'm like, delete. Yeah. Guys, it just... Who's, who's coming up with this stuff? It's hilarious. I got Mark Zuckerberg here. So uh, no, no, like, we, we try to remove the, the stuff that's just 100% false and it's not going to get you there, but we can't do it perfectly. So it's, um, 
guys use it is a great tool because I don't know any other Facebook group where you can get this level of interaction and actually get the truth. It's not perfect, but you can get a pretty good consensus. And me and Zach are in there every day and just it's like, like looking at everything digitally because you can't be in a room of people that just wholesale. Like it's really hard to get in a room of 50,000 people that just hold. It'll be really fun to do yeah. something like that, but, but you, it costs so much money to be able to do that. But here's the cool part. You can go in a little room of 60,000 people, ask questions, comment about stuff, have a community of active wholesalers that are getting better every day that in my humble opinion are getting really good wholesaling information. That's what I think. Yeah. I think you think that too. No, they're, they're, that, yeah. that, that's why I'm telling you right now, you're watching this live stream. You need to be watching this live because not just so you watch us live because I you know you could we could spell our coffees uh, and then it could go everywhere and that's fun. And so well, that but, never happens on uh, this show. It always happens. It never happened. But I have never spilled that, the coffee. The most important part about watching us live besides being able to experience the uh, the intro, which is the greatest part of the live, yeah, obviously, the best part. is you're in the comments right now. I can talk to anyone in the comments like I can talk to all, I can network with the people in the comments. Honestly, what I'll be doing right now, if I'm going to start JVing, hey, this is Zach. I'm a beginner. I don't know anything about wholesaling, but I want to start. Who is in Western North Carolina that wants to talk with me, right? Like you can do that. And that's the greatest part. You can network in there because everybody watching this right now is actively trying to become better. And you are who you are associate with. Mm -hmm. This isn't 1994 anymore, right? You can associate with people on the internet. It's fun. Like nobody can like, you can be you can be best friends with people. Dude, the I'm a now. dinosaur that does it. So it's I, like it's, I came from a world. Ready for this? <laughs> I show my age now. Oh no! I came from a world with no cell phones and no internet. So it's like, and honestly, there's some huge advantages because if you knew how to network, you dominated because nobody else would do it. And go in the comments, guys. Like I'm talking like people that are actively doing deals that talk to sellers that like you can just get stuff. Like I know Jason. He said the dog spilled the coffee, right? That's a funny See? one, but Jason's in South Carolina. He's doing good. Like talk to him. There's so many great people that you get a network in the Facebook group, but also in the live chat right now. Yeah. Uh, most active on YouTube. So I, I would tell you, I would probably watch the live streams on YouTube. Uh, that's just, there's the least amount of spam on there. Uh, but honestly, like, there's so much great networking opportunities. And for starting out, it's really fun because you can be with someone who's like really close to like, really like lives like, I don't know, 15 minutes from you. That's actually still watching this stuff. What's the story you had today about, uh, didn't you get, you were buying some multifamily deal, right? Or there's an inspection and somebody were, like knew who you were. Oh yeah. 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 yeah like yeah, no, I, I'm, uh, I'm buying a, uh, a commercial unit and, uh, we've had a bit of a, well, we had a bit of an issue on it. So it's like, anyways, not to get into it, but someone's like, Oh Yeah. You know, uh, my husband like s saw you on the internet or something like that. It's just kind of funny. And it's like local, yeah. which is really didn't cool. Say, didn't she say like, are you flip with Rick? Uh, so it's like, oh my I, I get that. Like, every, I, are you the guy? Like I, I go, yeah, I am Rick. So it's, uh, guys, I really enjoy this business. And honestly, if, if I didn't take the leaps and bounds with Zach to like to do the internet, like I would just affect my local community, which is great. But the power of technology and now with what we're doing and the people we can help all over the United States and really bring you the message of wholesaling and uncomplicate it and take all these layers of BS off of it for you and just get you started, make your first hundred grand. Honestly, I give it to technology. I also give it to this guy's work ethic. And uh, I said, we're here to change wholesaling. The, the way I learned wholesaling, I don't want anyone to have to experience that crap. Yeah, it's, it's I had to seek so many people out and honestly, I didn't have a lot of money. And when I would give somebody my hard earned money and find out in like two weeks, they're a complete con artist. And by the way, it still goes on now even worse. But th this is true, but I do want to say one thing because we're getting the community stuff like that. There are crazy spam bots out here and you guys know what we're talking about. Oh, it's... I don't want to say the word on here, but if I, if I'm telling you to go purchase a coin or do something on the internet or want money from you. And it's like, it says Zach in, but there's two H's. It is a fake account. FYI, everyone who DMs me knows it's very hard to reach me via DM. I'm no. not actively DMing you. I, I am not. Okay. We're not like, doing that. I, I'm not. So I, there is probably 50 fake bots being done a day of me and him of just saying, Hey, I know this really cool thing. What's your WhatsApp? 
we're not going to just FYI for everyone. I, that's not, I don't do that. Okay. We don't, we're never going to ask money for no, you. We're not, so I make so, but it super simple. There's so many fake accounts out here. It's, I had one uh, DM bunch of people trying to scam people out. It was Z E C H yeah. uh, G I N N. Like just at the like, guys, just FYI. Like we do have these big inner, if someone's messaging you saying they're one of us, just, guys, it is not. And I beg you, please. Do not, because you're like, what's your wiring information? Uh, wire me ten grand, I'll give you thirty thousand back, guys. No, okay. I don't want your money. I'm not going to give you money, but I'm not going to take your money. I don't want like the only way you can pay me is if you do a JV deal with me. We can fl split the deal, okay? Uh, just FYI, guys. Like, there's going to be uh, everyone sees it here. Um, everyone sees it in the comments. Like, th there's so many people getting DM from fake Zacks. The only way you know if it's a real Zach or not is by asking questions. Yeah, ask very detailed questions. What is and, my uh, what is my favorite NFL team? Yeah, there you go. That's ask me one. that, okay? And then ask me who my favorite football player is. And I will clearly tell you what it is. And if it is not on that team, then it'll be wrong. And then lastly, what you want to make sure is just ask me who I hate. Ask me very, very weird specific questions that I would know. And it'd be very easy uh, for me to do. But like, guys... I will never ask you for anything. So just FYI, there's bots going out here doing it. I, I do have to reveal it. Like there's bots coming out here every day on this. I, so it's in this feed here too. I can't so do we it. Just kind of get it out. I, I can't so. get out of it. So just everyone understands that. Okay. So if, yeah. So if like somebody asked to me, I don't want to talk about Tom Brady right now because now we lost a first round pick due to Tom Brady. Tom Brady's ruining us and he's not even on the Patriots anymore. He's ruining I us. I, I just, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't even tell you about talking it. to the guy when. I don't want to talk about. It. I don't. He, want to he don't want. He don't ever come to Miami yeah, because I've watched that train wreck. So that, that's just great. So, uh, FYI, guys, <laughs> we have a great community. I would go to freeholsing.com. I would go in the live chat. I would do it. Um, it's an amazing club to be in. We love it, and uh, th that's what we have to say. So let's get back into this. You know how to talk to sellers. You got to act like you're buying a car. How do you find cash buyers? That's the last one. You know, there's three ways to find cash buyers in wholesaling real estate. The three. There's technically more than three ways, but there are three main ways to find cash buyers, I would say, for a beginner. Number one, cold call your Facebook groups, okay? So go into Facebook groups, get their phone numbers, and then cold call cash buyers in there. Use our scripts at freehostling.com, ask the right questions, get a proof of funds, cold call cash sales, you get it like listori.com. Then lastly, cold call the four rents. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to find cash buyers. Like go to Zillow, go to the four rents. That is hands down the best way to find cash buyers. Right, I, uh, I mean, it's, uh, honestly, that's the easy part of wholesaling. I'm just that is, but it's still a problem a lot of people have. Uh, so it, it's very, very important that we kind of answer that right now. But like, um, you know, it comes back to the question, you know, about wholesaling real estate. How do you get started? You just got to start. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, yeah, I'm just telling you, just don't sit there and study it. Like I told you, I bought a house with probably 50 of the best, like some of the best classic uh, wholesaling flipping books. And like here at the end of the day, I'm buying it from this guy. It's just like, it was just a weird moment yeah. for me. But I will tell you, man, those books are full of gold in there because there was at some point, everybody told the truth about like real estate investing. Something happened in around 2010, 11, and it just turned to fluff. I, I don't know what happened. It's like, it was all about the coaching dollars. Guys, and why not? If I can make millions of dollars of coaching and I'm not, and I can sit behind a desk, why not do it that way? And I'm just here to tell you, it's, it's really, really changed. So if you get any of the old stuff, like the Carlton Sheets, Carlton Sheets like grew up in my town. So it's like, it's kind of really neat. There's, there's a few others too. I'll let you guys do the research on it, but it's. Yeah. So let, let, let's break this down. So uh, one thing too, I do want everyone in the, in the chat to go network. Uh, so this is wholesaling houses for, I don't think you've seen this. Uh, you might've, this is our breakdown on wholesaling houses for on the top cities that people are living in. So I'm saying right now, guys, if you're in any of these cities, you do go tell your, like network with people in here. There's every city they're learning wholesaling. They're not in a guru thing and they just want to learn for free. And they're great networking opportunities. Guys, I found so many JVing deals, deals I can't sell deals that I actually help people sell all in these places. I'd be, so these are the top actual cities. Uh, so there's a, the number one city is New York city. Obviously it's the biggest one, but like we have a huge New York city presence. Uh, so for New Yorkers out here, guys, 
network with other New Yorkers. There's a lot of you're them. one subway uh, away there. Um, I've been to New York. I love it. What's it called? Like the Y subway? The what do you mean? I, I don't know. Don't they like label like I? I've they only gave, been to New York. It was a few crazy. Times. It, I love New York. I don't um, understand. I would be lost if I didn't. I'm definitely going back there. Uh, Houston, Texas, L.A., San Antonio, Phoenix, Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Philly, Charlotte, guys. If you are in any of these cities, guys, you need to network with other people and just go and talk to them. I, I think it's always fun to see. So how do you actually talk to me one-on-one? -on -one? So let's do some one-on-one -on -one calls. Let's have some conversation with the people and really break down how to get started in wholesaling. But the last thing I could tell you is how to make money in wholesaling real estate taking action. I recommend go to freewholesaling.com, learn exactly the entire wholesaling process again from A to Z, mm -hmm. get a marketing list, start marketing the sellers, get a deal locked up, sell it to a cash buyer, get your check, quit your job, create the empire of dreams, create the life of your dreams and run off the sunset and become a full-time real estate wholesaler. That's th the bowl. This is what I did. I am no different than anybody watching this. I, I just got to the point where I was so fed up with my corporate job. I'm like, it can't be any worse. And I had hiccups just like everybody else on here, but here's the difference. I just took the action. I met with a ton of sellers and I just didn't stop. And I got through it. I had my conviction and here I am 20 years later and I'm still doing the exact same thing. I'm just, I'm better at it and I can do much more advanced deals. So in the beginning, it's going to feel awkward. It's going to be a little bit intimidating, but honestly, it's going to be, I'd rather you be uncomfortable now than horribly uncomfortable later because if you stay in your current position, you're going to hit a point where you're like, I, I can't take this anymore. And so I'd rather you do it while you have options. You have options always in life. If wholesaling is, is running true to you and it's like rings your heart bells and like it, it resonates with you, then just go do it. Like I have no special skill sets. I promise you my SAT score, if you have a sixth grader, it could probably crush it. I mean, I didn't, the SAT was horrifying for me. I, I just, I didn't do well. I was never a good student. I was, I was just a hyper kid. I, I drove my parents nuts and uh, I just learned differently. You're and still a hyper kid. I'm very <laughs> hyper. I'm ADHD. That's why I, I constantly, I, I love to work out. I love to be active outdoors. I love to do things. And then like when I get, but my, when I'm hyper, hyper focused, when I'm working on a deal, like I am all in. Like I know everything about that seller. I know every move they make. I know every hand gesture they make. I know their tonality. That's why I do so well because I pay attention. But the problem is sometimes if I have actually if I have too many things going on, like yeah. I get a little overwhelmed and I start going all over the point. So the really good thing at wholesaling, if you have that issue like you do with me, once you get in front of a seller, it's just it's just like one on one and like I shut the world down. And by the way, here's a tip. Don't bring your cell phone in when you meet with sellers. We can have your pocket emergencies, but emergencies. Like, but honestly, it's a distraction. If you look at that cell phone once, oh, no, I, you deserve no. to lose the deal. Yeah, I've never looked. At, I've only looked at my cell phone because you when, know what I say to people when they meet with me if they take the time and they just constantly look at their phone. I go, "Do you have somewhere more important to be?" And it ticks me off. I know it ticks you off. It just—it's ridiculous. It's a respect thing. Actually, like during Thanksgiving, like I get ticked. Oh, probably families watch. I'm going to get in trouble. Um, I'm this year. I'm telling you, I'm having a basket and you have to put your cell phone in it. And I'm putting it in another room. Jokes I, on you. I get to watch the Cowboys lose every time. I, so I don't even need my phone. I know, but like, I, honestly, I you can't, you can't do like three hours with family without looking at your like Instagram or like whatever. It's like, yeah. we are so addicted as a society. And it's like, I'm sorry to my Dallas people. I, I had to put in that joke in there because they lose every time, every time, or if it's in the playoffs, but I'm never on my phone. I'm always watching football. I spend Who's time the quarterback family. for the Cowboys? These Dak. Days. He's still there? Yes. He's actually really good. I thought uh, Romo. No, no. They need to bring Romo back.